Back in the mid-80s and early 1990s, most of the AM radio stations were broadcasting in AM stereo. That's right, hi-fi stereo on AM. But since that time, all of the stations have reverted back to mono. So how am I going to be able to test my AM stereo radios? Well, I'm going to have to build an AM stereo transmitter. Let's watch. Now, I've built low-power FM transmitters in the past. I've built a couple of them that were, and still are, in use in community radio stations uh, over the last 30-odd years. And we're talking low-power units, you know, in the range of 5 to 25 watts, basically, that are in operation in some remote communities where they had no commercial stations. And I, under contract, built a couple of, of transmitters. But one that I never did build, that always I always did want to build, was, I think, a little more of a challenge. You see, an FM transmitter is basically a single chip solution. You can buy the FM modulator chips and basically just have to come up with a, a frequency generation uh, a scheme such as a phase lock loop to set the frequency, which is the, the FM units that I've built, were based on the very popular Ramsey FM25 uh, type of transmitter kit that was offered for years when Ramsey Electronics was around. And you set the frequencies using dip switches. But one I always wanted to build was an AM stereo transmitter. And the reason I want to build one is because I've got multiple AM stereo radios and nothing to listen to on. Nothing to listen to on AM stereo because all of the AM stations that were at one time broadcasting stereo have reverted to Monoro operation. I came across this kit on eBay and it's a partially assembled kit because as you can see the there are some parts that are already mounted on the uh, on the breadboard. So he's already he's already mounted the power switch and got the power lead mounted here and looks like a tuning capacitor. And he's got uh, he's got an IC mounted to the display and stuff, but the rest of it is all has to be constructed, and it's going to be a breadboard type construction. So when I got this unit as a kit, I thought this might be kind of cool to uh, assemble. He's got all the components laid out on a card, but no circuit board to help me. So I'm going to have to wire this point to point. The assembly instructions are on this USB stick. So let's uh, start building this AM stereo transmitter. This is a Motorola CQAM compatible transmitter. So when it's all said and done, it should transmit a stereo signal. I think the output power on it is maybe 100 milliwatts or so of power. It falls under part 15. Anyway, let's uh, Let's start building. So the first thing I'll do is I'll remove the pref board. As you can see, it's already been milled to the correct circuit, and we just have to install the components in the proper location and connect the wires. And uh, hopefully this thing's gonna do what they say, transmit an, an AM stereo signal to my radio. I'm just waiting for my computer to get ready here, and then uh, We'll start uh, mounting the components. Okay, so it's going to be a series of pictures on here. So I'm just going to enlarge the pictures and see what I need to do. It says here I've got to mount the variable inductor as shown. Okay, the variable inductor, I'm having to count the holes here. It's mounted right here right on this line and we've got six holes over one two three four five six to this jumper in line with this jumper so that's the variable inductor good old 40 percent lead solder is so much easier to work with and do a quality job okay that's the variable inductor mounted correctly like this looking at the uh, looking at the picture here it's the next 
Nope, I'm one off here. It'll be the next one over from the coil that I just put in. So there should be three. Yeah, the fourth one over. So that's where the transistor goes, right here. One up from the line and right there. So we'll mount that transistor. Now I'm not going to bore you guys showing every single component being mounted on this thing because that's ridiculous. This thing took several hours to assemble when you see the high density of the components. So I'm going to be skipping ahead a bit here to get the construction portion completed in a reasonable amount of time and then we'll move on to the alignment in another video. But it's still going to be fairly comprehensive to show you what parts need to be mounted on it. But if you want to build one of these kits, um, they do come with good photographs of the actual component placement for each of the parts that need to go onto the board. Here's a sample page of uh, the assembly instructions. So as you can see, it's showing each component that needs to be mounted. So we're going to mount these parts in the order that they're shown on my installation guide. And uh, then we'll double check our work and uh, complete the final setup. So I'm just going to skip ahead here, maybe do some high speed time lapse. And we'll get this thing assembled in record time. <laughs>
Okay, 40 picofarad capacitor installed over here against the edge of the board. We have a 220 resistor to install. It says vertically as shown. Where the heck is it? I guess it's this one here. Looks like it's next to where this diode was. It's going to be right down in here. That's where it is. Right next to these other two resistors. Looks like it's right on the line. And it's right behind this one. So it goes in like this. Looks like it goes in like this. Goes in like that. To connect between this capacitor, this resistor, and the other one's right on the cross point. So that one goes in like that. The board is getting very full of components. Very full. So there's the completed AM stereo transmitter. Uh, it's set up for 400 milliwatts of power. I changed out that resistor. I put the one watt resistor in, in place of the, or the one ohm resistor in place of the 22. I want full power. So this will give me 400 milliwatts. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And uh, the next one will be when I assemble the unit into the case, the cabinet, and set it up. So here's the cabinet here. It, it, it's come pre-wired. You can believe the workmanship on this. Just, just hanging parts in free space. But the uh, power control and the frequency display and stuff, that was already pre-made. So uh, the next video will mount it in the cabinet, tune it up and test it, and do the alignment on it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you uh, in part two real soon.